Greetings. My name is Dr. Prashant Kumar and I teach philosophy in Lakshmi College, Delhi University. Uh, I am a philosophy professor and there is a one subdomain of philosophy which we call ontology and which is uh, normally we don't teach in Delhi University but uh, this is a very significant subdomain of philosophy and I am going to talk about it, uh, uh, talk about the introduction of ontology. Normally when we talk about ontology, generally we consider uh, ontology is something very very fundamental uh, in, in our reality. And whenever we are talking about fundamentality of re reality, most of the time we tend to divert to metaphysics. And if we consider Aristotle as the great metaphysician in earlier times, meta uh, metaphysics is a one book that was written by Aristotle. And in metaphysics, Aristotle talks about being and uh, this the concept of being is considered as the fundamental content of ontology. The significant point that comes out from Aristotle is in his book Metaphysics says that the job of metaphysics is to understand being as being qua being. It means that if you want to study being we need to understand being in terms of being. In other words, it's a non-circular way of understanding being. But most of the time when we hear being, we have really no idea what kind of being we are talking about. In other words, what are the characteristics of being? And being, the term being, got very popular in phenomenological tradition. And I think the, the credit goes to Heidegger. When Heidegger starts talking about being, he is talking about being in a different way. So this is a one understanding of ontology where being takes the central place in, in, the, in the subject matter of the of this subdiscipline. But are we really talking about being when we are talking about when we talk about ontology? Most of the thinkers might disagree with this premise. Uh, if we understand the history uh, of ontology, at least we can think of two different traditions they, 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 they work in ontology. One is analytic tradition, which starts with Quine. Quine wrote a wonderful paper uh, titled On What There Is. And there, he is not specifically talking about being. He is talking about what exists. Uh, as it is, it is clear with the title of the paper. And whenever we are talking about what exists, instead of focusing on being slash existence, we are focusing more on the existence of a certain kinds of objects. And this tradition has its, its own, uh, own characteristics, its own benefits. So instead of talking about existence slash being, they are more interested in finding the criteria through which they can decide whether something exists or not. That's the one tradition. And secondly, we have talked about uh, phenomenology where Heidegger takes a center place. And when we are talking about phenomenology, the, the question of being becomes the central question. So that's how we can understand the, the division in ontology. But still, it does not answer the question. What is the central question that we ask in ontology? Should we consider uh, what exists? It means that deciding the criteria for something to exist, that's the central question that we are asking in ontology? I would argue no. There are other ways. Similarly, one can ask that, is asking question about being the central question in ontology? I would also say that it can, but it's not something that we are worrying about. So if these two questions, though they are asked in ontology as a central question, if they are not the central question, what should be the central question? I believe here the, the new understanding in ontology becomes significant and I want to refer to uh, a philosopher, uh, Professor Dr. Marcus Gabriel, who wrote a book, Why the World Does Not Exist. And there he specifically talks about what do we do in ontology. And in order to answer this particular question, he says that our central task in ontology is to understand existence. Precisely if we talk about the meanings of existence and whenever we are talking about the meanings of existence it means that we need to understand in what ways we can talk about existence or in what ways a particular object can exist and the moment we start using the word what ways we can also give a different sense 
and, and, and when we can give a different scent, it means that in what modes we can think of an object. Uh, for example, if I talk about uh, myself, right now I am making a video. In other ways, I am also a son. In other ways, I am also a professor. I am also a student. It means that though I here refer to Prashant, but at the same time, it has a different modes of existence. It means that I can still exist in n numbers of ways while maintaining my i-ness and, and that's how we can exist. So if we are going to talk about existence in terms of modes, can modes of existence be a central question? I think that uh, Dr. Gabriel has already talked about the central question can be the, the meanings of existence or what is existence. And when we talk about modes of existence, we already assume the, the, the question of existence, which means that we already assume at least one kind of understanding of existence and on the basis of that we think there are various ways of existence. So this is a, a kind of background that I want to give before I can come to the direct topic. Uh, as we are looking at the notion of existence in uh, Indian philosophy, I, I will be referring to a book Nirukta Panchadhyayi. Although in Nirukta Panchadhyayi they do not specifically talk about existence, but they talk about how we can think of various facets of existence. So I will be focusing more on that. But before moving into that particular domain, we also must to think about two kinds of questions that we have discussed. One kind of question that analytic thinkers ask and another kinds of question that phenomenologists ask. And if I introduce you another philosopher, and the name of the philosopher is Dale Jacobs, who wrote a book, Ontology, he makes a distinction between these two kinds of questions. Uh, one kind of question he calls applied ontological question, applied scientific ontological question, and another question, pure philosophical ontological question. The question that phenomenologists are asking are pure philosophical ontological question, and the question analytic thinkers are asking is specifically coined we call or uh, Jacquette's call applied scientific ontological question and when we are talking about the, the current question that we are dealing today uh, the ways of existence it generally comes in pure philosophical ontological question although I and we should not accept the distinction because of certain ways because if we say pure philosophical ontological question we are not quite sure what Jackie's are talking about by the word pure. Aren't all the philosophical questions pure in terms of uh, uh, the intensity of the question? Similarly, if we ask, uh, that similarly if we focus on the other aspects, applied scientific ontological question, we are not quite sure what Jackie's is talking about scientific. Because if these questions, what Quine are asking, if we consider scientific, should we not consider the, the scientific question that scientists are asking and in what terms applied is being used here. Though we can accept the broader spirit behind the distinction, yet we may not accept the, the kind of terminology he is using. So even uh, after having such dispute in this kind of distinction, we can still have the spirit and while having the spirit, we can say that the ways of existing can come in, in pure philosophical ontological question while we can drop the word pure let's say that philosophical uh, ontological question and when we are talking about philosophical ontological question our central question is the, the question of existence and a subsection of that particular question will be the modes of uh, existence and when in in, in Nirukta Panchadhyayi when we are asking uh, uh, how many types how many ways we can exist uh, there is a one particular shloka that, that talks about uh, the, the six ways of existing. I am just going to read this shloka. Shad bhav vikara bhavantiti varsha rika jayate asti viparigamate vadhate apakshite vinashriti. And here if we focus on the latter part of uh, shloka, there are six ways of existing. One cannot say that this is specifically talking about existence, but if 
we consider one aspect of all these six ways, we simply cannot say that this exists or this does not exist. The first aspect is Jayate. Uh, what does Jayate mean? It means that the things we are talking about is not existing right now, but it is in the process of existing. So suppose if we talk about curd, it is not in the milk, but suppose we put a lemon or, or let's say that a small piece of curd there in the milk, we can say that it is in the process to become curd. And when we are saying that it's in the process of becoming, can we say that curd does not exist there? Or can we say that curd already exists there? And this kind of dilemma that we are talking about uh, in Nirte Panchadhyay, this is considered as one aspect of existing. It's not existing, it's existing, it's somewhere in between. And that's the spirit that uh, in, in Nirut Panchadhai, uh, Indian thinkers are capturing. The, the second aspect is Asti. And whenever we are talking about Asti, it means that it already, it is already there. It is already there, what do we mean by uh, this particular understanding? It is already there. It means that it has certain... Uh, temporal understanding of existing. So suppose if we say that there is curd in the fridge, we are not saying that the curd is not there. We are not saying that the curd is not existing. What we say that the curd is already there in the present time. And whenever we talk about something in that sense, we are saying that yes, it exists. It exists in certain temporal and spatial form. One must also think about it, here we are also assuming a particular kind of understanding of existence and the moment we lose that kind of understanding of existence, uh, we may understand other ways of existence as well. It means that suppose, uh, for example, we say that chair exists and one believes that chair exists, uh, one is already assuming a kind of uh, uh, existence that he is applying to all the other things. Suppose if one is a hardcore believer in in, physical, in the existence of physical objects, that person might not be able to believe in the existence of God, ghost, unicorn and other things that we call abstract objects. So it depends on what kind of uh, uh, notion of existence you believe. Here when we are talking about Asti, mostly they are focusing on the physical ways of being. And uh, why I'm talking about physical ways of being? Because the moment we are going to move to the third aspect, which is Viparile Mate, it means that it's changing. And whenever we are talking about changes, uh, mostly they are talking about the changes in the physical attribute. Suppose, uh, if uh, again we take the same example, the curd. If we keep curd for longer time, it may get sad. It will not be in the same way. And the moment we say that it will not be in the same way and it will be in a different way in the other time, there will be a change. Uh, and, and, and this change has already been uh, addressed by Aristotle and also Heraclitus. But here the specific point is that whenever we are talking about change, we are talking about in physical attributes. And why I am focusing more on the physical attribute? Because the moment we move on to the other aspect, this physicality seems quite apparent in the other forms of existing. And the moment we are talking about changing, how does it impact on the ways of existing? Similarly, I, I can also give another example. Like when I was in graduation, though this I was existing, but at the same time, it was existing in a different way. Right now, when I'm sitting here and speaking to you, my ways of existing are also different. So from my graduation to, to, add, uh, to this level, there is a huge change. And are we just talking about the changes uh, here uh, uh, physically? Mostly yes. Why? Because every time I say that I have achieved this and this and this, this has this uh, uh, physicality in that. So even if I say that now I am a doctorate, though one can say that there are also changes in, in, in my mentality, in my mental state, but even all those mental states can also be understood in the, in, in, the that, in a brain forms or neurological form. In that sense, we are also considering changes. The another aspect that we are going to talk about is Vardhate. Vardhate uh, mainly means there is a growth, there is an addition. And whenever we are talking about addition, it means that if we are talking about curd, so we can say that there were n numbers of bacteria there, but as we keep 
keeping it in, in open space, there can be increase in numbers. And if we consider those bacteria are beneficiary, having large number of bacteria will, would be beneficiary to us. It means that we need to have curd with more bacteria. So if we understand that sense, keeping curd for longer period of time may have uh, uh, n numbers of or larger numbers of bacteria. It means that though we may not see changes, but there are changes in in addition way. Vadhate typically means that the being the 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 being the existing the mode of existing is increasing uh, in in near time. So these are the four ways one one can think of mode of uh, existence. The another one can also understand in relation to Vadhate. And here we are talking about Apakshiyate. So earlier we were talking about change in terms of increase, in terms of addition. Here we are going to talk about uh, existing in terms of reduction, decrease. So similarly we, we can also think of another example. Let's talk about chair or, or, or uh, let's talk about any other physical object. And what happens? When we are going to keep that object for a longer of time, we can see reduction there. Reduction in terms of, uh, it may be engaging with environment, it may be there for multiple uses, and if those things are there, there is a high probability that the, the material, the substance of that particular object may, they may decrease in their quantity. And that's how, though we are not changing, uh, let's say that the, the, the central and the central characteristics are necessary condition of being chair, yet we can think of various changes in, in negative ways uh, in their existence. So that's how we can think of uh, the modes of existence in three ways, though the central aspect would be the change. First change, then change in a positive way, then change in a negative way. And that's how we can think about it, uh, changes or modes of existence in that term. The last one, is Vinashtiti. Vinashtiti comes from Vinas. It means that it's the complete destruction of that object. So we started from becoming and now we are talking about the end of that thing. And whenever we are talking about end, keeping the, uh, the basic and the central respect of Indian philosophy intact, here destruction we means matter. And the moment we talk about the destruction of matter, and now you can think of why I was focusing much on uh, physicality or materiality, because there is this sense of destruction. And when I was using the word, the keeping the central spirit of Indian philosophy, what I mean was there that there is this certainty, there is this universal existence. And whenever we're talking about universal existence, it means that Atman or, or, or the Brahman, and whenever we are talking about Atman and Brahman, it means that there is an eternal existence. And if there is an eternal existence, we cannot simply think about the destruction of such thing. And here, if you are talking about destruction, matter should take place uh, instead of Atman and Brahman. And matter, if it has uh, any origination, it will be destructed. So that's why we are talking about the destruction. It means that if a particular object thing or a person ever existed, he is going to die. And whenever we are talking about die, death or the destruction of the object, it means that its existence has been nihilated. In that sense, they are talking about six ways of existence. Please mind it, and it's, it's, a, it's a warning in academic language, that we are talking about ways of existing we haven't discussed the notion of existence. And in the entire discussion, we are also assuming one kind of existence. And here, that kind of existence is directly related to the existence of material objects or physical objects. And within that scenario, we have discussed various ways of existence. Thank you.